I went in with thinking that, um, you know, it's a gimmick and, but it'll be fun to discuss. Today's video is a little different than my normal deep dive presentation videos. I was really, really, really interested in this particular product. So if you guys watch this channel, you know I have reviewed a Strandberg guitar before. I have a deep dive on it. I will put a link down below where I go through the guitar in super detail. And it comes with a deluxe gig bag. It's actually made for this guitar. It has a lot of cool compartments. It looks like a piece of luggage more than a gig bag. This guitar is on loan from Strandberg. So this isn't my guitar. And I have to give them a big shout out, not only for loaning the guitar to me, but they have loaned it to me for a half a year. And it's because I really needed to understand this guitar. I just didn't want to do a video where I'm like, hey, it's got squiggly frets. And then we kind of like do some measurements like I normally do and go into some of the details in electronics. And to be honest with you, this guitar has a lot of cool things like all Strandbergs, you know, the size, the weight, um, the fact that it's ergonomic, but all of those can be answered, like I said, with the normal Strandberg guitar uh, that's in my other video. What makes this particular guitar different than that model is one thing and one thing only. It has the true temperament fret system. Now it is stainless steel, just like all Strandberg guitars. The true temperament system gives you perfect intonation. But I wanna know what this adds, you know, what value is added to having this system. The first thing, and that's why I wanna do this video that I wanted to share is I was totally wrong about this guitar. I thought this guitar was for someone who shreds or plays really, you know, in, in, involves scales, lots of noodling, and that's not what I see this guitar for. So let me, let me start with a couple things. First thing I wanna tell you about that's really interesting and cool is how they install these frets. So the way it's done is really, uh, really unique. Normally when you have fret wire, what you have is a tang or a blade. You, you cut a line into the fretboard with a saw and then you press the fret into the fretboard. And generally that's 90%, if not 95% of all guitars are done the same way. These frets are different as the fret width is consistent all the way through the fret. This is the fret, there is no blade, okay? And how they do it is they take a, a router and they route the design on the fretboard. They don't do any pressing, it's all glued in. And in this particular case of this guitar, this is a phenolic resin fretboard, which means it's man-made material. It's not going to shrink. It's not going to expand. And so therefore the bond with this fret is pretty strong. You're not going to see it come out. So that is a very unique way. So this is important to mention because this is not something that the average uh, you know, Joe or Jane at home the hobbyist can install these frets. You have to have some serious tools at least a router, and you're gonna have to have their templates. So this has an extreme cost. This, adding this fret system to a Strandberg adds about a thousand dollars. Probably because not only the expense of doing it, but also the fret, the material cost of the frets, the, the system they sell, of course, and it's much more expensive than the average, you know, $30 piece of fret wire. Generally speaking, a guitar will have six feet of fret wire, so you guys know. So the problem is you just can't get a six feet of fret wire and bend them into these shapes, okay? These are precision made, and we haven't even got to the neck. Right now, we're just talking about the True Temperament fret system. This is obviously a Strandberg, and their neck is much different. Now, once you pick up this guitar and put your hands on the neck, you're gonna notice the neck is very different, as you can see right here. It's called the Endure Neck, and it utilizes flat surfaces rather than round profiles. You can see how your thumb will wanna follow these lines and put your hand in a perfect playing position. I'm not here to validate the price. I'm here to explain what goes involved in the price and why the average person's not gonna be able to just put this in their guitar if this is something they want. So that being said, Let's talk about why you'd want this. Right now is a good time to talk about today's sponsor, which is the CMA YouTube channel, because without them sponsoring content like this, I wouldn't be able to put all the hours behind the scenes to make something like this. So if you love country music and you love learning about what goes on behind the scenes in country music and the country music industry, I would check out CMA's YouTube channel. I talked about this before when I highlighted music to my ears, and now I'm checking out In Their Boots, which is something I really, really like because it's kind of like this channel. It's showing you somebody who does something in an industry and you get to see it through their eyes or in their boots. One of the things I like and I think you'll identify with in the show, they're not just showcasing people, they're letting you see and experience things through their work life and get a real sense of what it takes to do what they do. 
And I also want to point out that CMA is launching some other great content like High Notes, where they sit down with country music icons, up and coming artists, stagehands, tour managers, and all the people who make country music. So go ahead and click the link down below and you can check out In Their Boots and subscribe to their channel. Of course, like any channel on YouTube, it's free to you. So it's worth checking out. Like I said, this is a gear channel, but without music and the people who make music and all the levels in these industries, we wouldn't have what we have here on this channel. And that's why I like sharing stuff like this. So what I want to do now is uh, do some playing. We're going to listen to how these uh, frets affect the sound and the tonality of the chords. And uh, we're also going to compare it to my standard uh, Strandberg. So this is the same model, but with uh, regular frets. Now this has a tremolo, but I'm going to run straight into the computer. I'm not running any reverb or anything because I don't want to change anything. I just want to I want to show you what I've discovered over hours and hours and hours of playing this thing. The first thing I want to do is play some basic chords and I want to I want to compare them to the regular guitar and uh, I want you to just focus on the tonality of the chords, not the tone. That's why I'm running straight on the computer. Obviously, these have different pickups. There's going to be factors in this, but again, you know, we're not trying to compare the tones of the two, two guitars. We're trying to compare the, uh, not so much the intonation, but the clarity of the chords, right? Or the difference of the chords. So let's start with the C. interesting about this. First, a C chord is the, my go-to chord uh, as a guitar tech to play pretty much any guitar and just hear it. I like chords, so you know, if I'm trying to figure out how bad out of intonation a guitar is or how out of whack a guitar is, I like chords that have open strings and fretted strings like the G. And obviously it sounds beautiful. It almost sounds like a piano. I've heard that is actually a negative to the guitar. I watched a really great video that I highly recommend you watch. I'll put a link to it with Adam Neely and um, Paul Davids where they react to this guitar, a guitar that has the uh, true temperament fret system. And they did a reaction video in real time. In other words, they were handed the guitar and they kind of messed with it. And they had a really, some interesting thoughts on it. I think, uh, everything they said was valid. I actually worked for me. However, I would say that now that I've had the guitar for almost half a year, I would say that a lot of things they thought, I don't know if they would think them if they continue to play it. Because reactionary, there's two reactions you have to this, these frets uh, and this guitar when you first play it. One, the first reaction is you're like, I don't even notice anything. Because you're looking for that big dramatic change, right? You're, you're like, this is so much more spicy than the other pepper, right? That's what you're looking for. And it's not, it's subtle. And then once you go, oh, it's a subtle change. And then you try to decide in your brain what the value of that change is. Like, is it worth this amount of money? And uh, I took that out of the equation for a while. I said, okay, let's not talk about money. Let's just talk about good. Right? What sounds good? What feels good? And like I said, we're going to answer a ton of questions right now. So, so back to the chord. Let's do the G. And not only do I want you to, to hear... ...how good it sounds. It's sustaining more. Now, I know what you're thinking. That could be the pickups. Well, this is true. And it could be the amp, but we're not running an amp. But here's what's really cool. Um, when the guitar is, when there's no volume in the guitar, this guitar sustains longer than this one. And I thought, well, maybe that's the tremolo. It is possible. And again, sometimes it's the magnetic pull of the pickups. These are all possible. However, I did tons of online research and I found that players were experiencing the same thing, uh, that everything sustains longer. And that kind of makes sense, right? It, it actually does if you think about it. Um, the way that the the notes are ringing, right? They can actually have, just like feedback, right? This, sometimes the notes can create, the way they, they, they reverberate, they vibrate, they can create the feedback versus not creating feedback, um, what, regardless of what the amp's doing and stuff. So there is a little factor in this, but again, that's not where you're looking at the system is that it sustains longer. You're looking for the clarity. So let's do an A-B test. I wanna have some fun. 
I'm going to strum chords, the basic chords, uh, on this guitar and on the uh, the Strandberg with the standard frets, and uh, I'll let you guys hear and tell me which one you think's which. So let's start with example A. What I want to do now is react to what you just heard. And I want to kind of tell you uh, what I hear and then you guys can kind of tell me if you heard it too. Uh, so let's go ahead and push play. So the first thing I hear is this is the uh, Troop Temperament guitar. And I don't really hear anything. I hear the G chord sounds good, but nothing really spectacular. So now we're trying the standard Strandberg with the G chord and I hear the waver. It's just like the slight, slight out of tune. Now I've definitely intonated these guitars, check both guitars. Same thing, now the D chord sounds good. I will tell you, hold on a second. Okay, so on this D chord, same thing. A little bit, just a little bit of waver, not a huge amount. Now we're on the C chord of the True Temperament guitar. Really interesting. I can see something I gotta share with you guys for a second, but watch this. Regular scrambler. It definitely sounds more out of tune, right? The intonation's out. So the to me, uh, I don't know if every chord was totally different, but the C chord to me really, really popped as being really, really kind of piano-like. But here's the interesting part. Looking at the results, um, everything but the C chord, <laughs> the true temperament was, if you look at the time frame, frame not almost, not twice as long, but almost sustained twice as long until you get to the C chord. And then believe it or not, the standard Strandberg was one second longer, or no, half a second longer. So again, a little bit more sustain and a little bit less of that wavering. And again, this is very, very minute stuff to talk about. And some of you guys are gonna be like, who cares? But I think it's more about discovering the stuff and just figuring out if it works. Now I wanna play something for you uh, on the standard guitar that is uh, something I like to play, but it always kinda sounds a little off. So let's go ahead and play this. I even thought I'm out of tune, right? So it's, listen, this is a... me to the second part of my journey that I want to share with you, which is I watched uh, two musicians play together where one was playing this and one was playing a standard guitar and they were sounding a little out of tune from each other, a little the intonation sound off from each other because this guitar was obviously in true temperament and the other guitar was not. And so there's value to that. I understand that too, right? I mean, I, I have to say, uh, if you're in a band with two guitar players, you might have to be in a situation where you both have this guitar. This guitar definitely helped my playing. It definitely made me think differently over the few months that I was playing it, like I said, a period of almost half a year. I think that if every guitar player could spend a week, a year, a month with a true temperament system or a guitar like this, an incredible instrument like this, I think you would come up with things and feel things and do things that you would never would have seen or thought of or heard of before. 
And I think once you do that, do you need it? You don't need it. So that brings me to the second part of this journey. And this is gonna be really unfair to the Strandberg and the True Temperament system. I wish there was like a way for everybody to rent this system. I, I, I it sounds almost crazy, but it's absolutely true. There's a couple of things I wanna share that are important. Some questions that I'm sure you have. One, can you bend with these frets? <laughs> It takes no uh, getting used to this whole system. In fact, it's, I think it's easier than the slanted fret systems or the, um, you know, the multi-scale systems. It's a lot easier than those. There's nothing that's uh, weird about it, except for sometimes when you bend on certain frets because of the way that they're designed, when you're bending, your a side of your finger will barely touch a part of the fret. It doesn't hurt, hinder, affect you because the frets are so smooth and round and perfect uh, because the way they're designed and dropped in. And uh, it's no hindrance at all. But to say that you wouldn't notice it, yeah, you notice it because you're, you're aware of it. And of course, it doesn't shock you because you're kind of aware of the fret system. The question I wanted to ask myself, which is a tough one, which is if I could choose between these two, okay, whether I bought them or this company gave them to me or whatever, it doesn't matter. If I can only have one, okay, which one would I have? And over the six months, if I made this video, there are times where I would have said this, and there are times when I would have said that. And it kept going back and forth and back and forth. And I realized one day when I really thought about it, what was it that would make me go back to this? And it was never the way it sounded. It was like maybe I preferred the Sir pickups over the stock. Uh, uh, Strandberg pickups. Maybe um, I like the roasted maple neck on this over the, the non-roasted neck. But the, and I definitely, for some reason, like the color of this. I like this green more than this uh, tobacco burst. Um, the tremolo never really factored into it. It's not something I care about. I like this one better. I find that the more I played it, the more I liked it. One of my biggest concerns, and again, that's another thing I want to talk about, was if I play this, oh no, I'll never play my other guitars again if I fall in love with this and then I'll be playing this one guitar all the time and you know, that's not gonna be great. That was a big concern for me because, but here's what I realized. That's not even close. And in fact, what happens is it's like a lot of guitars. There's a time and place for it. There's a time when you want the telly sound. There's a time when you want a, a whammy bar. There's a time when you want the hardtail. There's a time when you want a humbucker versus a single coil. Certain guitars just have certain benefits. There's a reason why you'd want a 12 string over a six string. There are reasons why you want these things. This guitar, there's a reason why I would want this. Um, just playing. <laughs> chords on this guitar are beautiful. And at first I had the same uh, experience that Paul Davids and Adam Neely had, which is it sounds more like a piano than a guitar. And it, it rings out, but there's just something cool about that. <laughs> there's just something really cool about the way it sustains and plays. Of course, coupled with the Strandberg uh, Endura neck, which is this really cool neck that I've talked about in detail in that video, so click on the link for that. I prefer this guitar in every way. And that was really tough for me because, uh, like you guys, uh, I have to pay the Rapture. In other words, I have to pay for this, and uh, it's an expensive guitar. So whether or not I can buy this from Strandberg and keep it, or whether or not I will just have to buy one online and get one, I am going to get one. And of course, that means this one will have to go uh, for this one. It's just there's something about this that is something I don't have with the other guitars and something that has definitely changed my musical thought process. And like I said, there's a point now where I could say, because I've had so much time with it, I maybe don't need it anymore. But I kind of want to see where this journey keeps taking me. It's a really interesting journey. It's a unique instrument that if you get a chance to try one, you should, but definitely go in with a bigger open mind than me because it shouldn't have took me so long to figure out I liked it. Um, like I said, I really fought it for a long time. So, all right. On that note, I wanna thank you so much for spending some time with me today. To the next time, know your gear. I wanna point out another great video, which is Dr. Andre Flood. He did a video talking about this exact same guitar, but a seven string, and he has some really more musical theory discussion of this.